look, that's ours. The tasteful three-piece bedroom suite, figured walnut. That's right. Just the day after tomorrow, we'll be waking up in that. Herbert. Well, we're getting married, aren't we? I can't get over that man in the shop. Wasn't he nice? Fancy giving us that lovely fender, firearms and coal scuttle. I hope he doesn't get into trouble. What's the good of them? We've got gas fire. Tickets, please. What time do we get into Truro? You're due in at half past ten. Change at Foul Vale Junction. Half past ten. Thank you. I said we should have caught that earlier train. That furniture chap would keep on talking. We shall cop it from her. Now then, my lad, this is a railway carriage, not a playground. Go on, over here. This is a non-smoker. Tickets, please. Oh, tickets. Again? I haven't seen your ticket yet, madam. Well, if you haven't, everyone else on your railway has. Hush, <laughs> Polly. I beg to show it at every station we've stopped at, all the way from London. I'm sorry, madam, but we have to keep a check on travellers nowadays. Oh, perhaps you think I'm a parachutist. Perhaps you'd like to look at those parcels, see if I've got a bicycle or machine gun. I only want to see your ticket, madam. Here's my ticket. And here's my identification card, and here's my ration book. And if you want my birth certificate, you'll have to ask Somerset House for it. Truro. Thank you, madam. Change at Foul Vale Junction. It's the next stop. You won't see the name on the station. Took a bit of a chance putting it on the ticket, didn't they? Oh, hello. <laughs> and that chap got a nerve dropping his hat out. <laughs> What's that? She's smiling. What? Eh? Uh, I mean the train. Uh, why did it stop? The old some fool's hat fell off. He pulled the cord. Oh, bless my soul. Mm. Good gracious. Here now, what's all the trouble? No trouble at all. I've got it now, thank you. Call the communication cord and stop the train to get his hat. Did you get his name and address? That's what I'm trying to get. Now, sir. Oh, where are the... Come on out of that. Come on, come! Hello. You still here? I was having a wash. This puff puff's filthy. No, sir. All right, I'll handle this. Thank you. Are you going to give me your name and address, or are you not? My name and address? Well, uh, actually, I'm travelling in Cobb. But that's me, Tommy Gambler, comedian and entertainer. Now, what's the address? For the next 16 weeks, I'll be at the Pier Pavilion, New Quay. 16 weeks? Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll see how I go on Monday night. You know, this will mean a prosecution, a five-pound fine, sir. What for? I can't understand what all this fuss is about. You stopped the train. Well, it was only a little stop. Besides, nobody minded. Did anyone here mind me stopping the train for a few minutes? No. We'll try another one. Did anybody here... Uh, now, look here, you better get back to your compartment. This is my compartment. Thanks ever so for seeing me home. No, sir, you wouldn't behave like this. I... <laughs> you know, I don't think this was your carriage. Wasn't it? The trouble is, they all look so much alike. If one only had a different colour scheme in each compartment, one could tell which was one's own compartment. Uh, excuse me, is this gentleman annoying you? Who, me? I wasn't talking to you, little man. Anyway, this is a first-class carriage. Well, what about it? 
Why, but you've got a third-class ticket. I have not. I've got a platform ticket. Is she a friend of yours? I never saw either of you before in my life. As I thought. You don't even know the lady. You force your way into her compartment and cause everyone a lot of annoyance. Now, run along to your old carriage before I call the guard. Here, let's be fair. After all, this isn't your carriage either. 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 Let's ask the lady. It's a good idea. Is it either or either? Neither. Neither. Either. What's this? Good afternoon. Who are these people? I have the slightest idea. Is your name Winthrop? Yes. R.G. Winthrop? Yes. In that case, this is your bag. Oh, and here's your coat, and here's your skull, and here's your book. Oh, we mustn't lose the place. There you are. What are you two playing at? One moment. Winthrop, R.G. Aren't you the all-rounder that played for the MCC? Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I only need you to complete my set. Set? Yes, cigarette cards, 50 famous cricketers. What are you two doing in here? Well, he lost his hat. Oh, so you're the idiot who stopped the train. Yes, I don't know my own strength. My time happens to be valuable, even if yours isn't. Now, perhaps you'll be good enough to move out of here before I lose my temper. Oh, yes? One minute. If I remember rightly, you were a boxing blue as well. Yes, I was. You mean you used to fight and knock them on the... Oh, well, circumstances alter cases. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Goodbye. Goodbye. we better be getting our things together. We'll soon be at Falvale. Oh, are you changing at Falvale? So am I. Is that a coincidence? Are you going to Newquay? No, we are not. Oh. Well, if you do, you must come and see me. I'm in the concert party there. My name's Tommy Gander. And if you give that to the manager, he'll give you a row of seats to yourself. Are you going to get out, or do I have to throw you out? Oh, Richard, is Leave this to me. Get out and stay out. I don't like strange men trying to scrape up an acquaintance with you. Oh, don't be silly, Richard. Sound like something out of East Lynn. Forgotten my hat. Cause of all the trouble. <clears throat> See you at Dalvey. Oh, go away! Yes, I know, but I'll pass ten. What's she going to say to that, I'd like to know? I'll take the ladies' bag. The guard said we have to go. Can I take that one? I'll take it. Can I have the show connection? I'll tell the lady. Yeah, what do you think you're doing? Excuse me. When the connection arrives, it's sure to be crowded. 
Wouldn't it be a good idea if you were to come in my compartment, you and your brother? The lady and her brother are travelling first class. Besides, he doesn't like you. Oh, a lot of people don't like me at first, but you'd be surprised how I grow on one. Even your brother might learn to care. Yes, I'm sure he would. But he's not my brother. Oh. I know. He's your father. I say, are these fellas annoying you again? Good afternoon. Sorry, Dad. Cheek. The door's further along, madam. That's just a window. <laughs> oh, thank you. Silly idea. Allow me, madam. Can I take your parcels? I'll take the Avery. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My gas mask. Thank you. I'm going to see my evacuated nieces, you know. Oh, nice. They're staying on one of those farms. I'm taking them butter and eggs from London in case they can't get them down there. Right, well, it's very nice. How long? Well, that's Polly's. Sauce. He won't mind, will she? <coughs> oh, hey, wait a minute. I've left my basket in the garden van. <coughs> hey, my, my basket's in the van. No, it doesn't. I threw it out on the platform. Threw it out? You'll be hearing from my solicitor. You'll be hearing from the company. I'll tell my mum of you. Gotcha. And good gotcha. Dead and alive sort of hold this? Where is everybody? Hello? 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 Savvy? Anyone at home? There's no one around there. Yes, someone. Ah, about time too. When does our connection for Truro come in? Come in? It'd be gone a quarter of an hour ago. Oh, blast, when's the next? There ain't no next. There's no more trains through here tonight. I'd be just going to lock up. Oh, Herbert. Uh, oh, Potter. When did the Truro train come in? <laughs> in about nine hours, Mum. What? I'm afraid our train was so late that the connection went without us. And do you know why it was so late? Our comic friend with his comic hat. Oh! Hey, you! What's his confounded name? Mr. Gander. Gander, come here. Most intelligent basket, that, you know, it seems to know me. Whenever I go near it, it creaks. As you got us into this mess, perhaps you can think of some way of getting us out of it. Out of what? Owing to your idiocy with Mr. Connection. Yes, and what's more, there's no train for nine hours. Nine hours? That'll be tomorrow, won't it? I've got to rehearse at Newquay at half past ten. You should have thought of that before you stopped the train. Oh, I know. We'll charter a special. Special, indeed. And who's going to pay for that? Well, they can take it out of the money I owe them. In for a fiver, in for a special. That's me. Excuse me, old man. You Have didn't you... know specials, you I could go up to four and six for a Do you mean one. to tell me we can't get to Truro tonight? Why? No. Leastways, not my train. Doesn't bear thinking about, does it, Herbert? That's right. I suppose that applies to Red Roof too, eh? No more trains tonight, nowhere. Uh, but I'm expected at Red Roof. I promised Dr. Harrowby a... Well, of all the quaint places. Oh, hello. Where does that line the other side go to? It don't go nowhere. Oh, it don't go nowhere. He means it stays where it is. Ha, 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 I haven't seen anything wrong with that. Hello. Oh, lovely. This is real concert party weather. This will send them in. Good gracious. He can't stand here and get soaked, eh? He could stand anywhere and get soaked. Pardon me. Cozy little place, isn't it? Well, if this is the Cornish Riviera, give me Camberwell. It's just gloomy, isn't it?
so this is the Ritz Carlton. Oh, allow me. There you are. What the devil are you doing? I was putting it on. Oh. Young man, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Am I popular? Hello, Polly. Polly, will you talk to me? Polly. Polly, moi d'amour. No? Sketch a Paul. Lady Paul. There's a Polly. There's a lovely girl. Are you one of the parents of Wimpole Street? Oh, don't do that. Not with company about. There she is. There's a girl. I say, I wonder if I could teach you to talk. I wonder if you could say Heil Hitler. Eh? No, not with a beak like that. Don't listen to him, Polly. If you ladies and gentlemen be ready, I'd like to lock up now. Lock up? You're not going to turn us out in this. No, why should I catch old Monia? I've had pneumonia, you know. <laughs> that was witty. You can't stay here. No? Well, I'm going to surprise you for a start. We're all staying. The railway company's taken our money and it's got to play the game. Yes, even on the sticky wicket. But Richard, if there aren't any more trains... Then he'll have to get us a bus or something. That's right, give me a number six. I've got some friends who live in Hackney. All fares ready, no standing on top. Oh, shut up. I'm not travelling in any bus. I paid to go all the way by train. Besides, Polly hates the smell of petrol. Polly, Polly, don't you? Uh, there must be some way. Hmm? Uh, Dr. Harrowby of Red Roof's expecting me. I'm going there as his locum and he's leaving on holiday tonight. Yes, please, you must do something. We've got to get back tonight, haven't we, Herbert? That's right. For one thing, the ceremony is in the morning. Ceremony? Oh, you mean a family bereavement? Oh, no. Herbert means we're getting married. That's right. Oh, and cut yourself a piece of wedding cake. Isn't that marvellous? I must kiss the bride. Oh, wrong lady. <laughs> Excuse me. Speech, speech. Must have a speech. Oh, I hope you'll be very happy. So do I. You. Same here. First a girl and then a boy. Oh, be quiet. But this isn't much of a place to spend your last bachelor hours. Oh, I don't know. I've slept in worse. You want to see my Anderson shelter? I think I'd better get down. Call me at 8 o'clock with a nice cup of tea. Shut up there, auntie. Good night, all. There'll be no sleep in here. The last train's gone and I gotta lock up. You can't stay here. I've had enough of this nonsense. The least you can do is to ring up a garage and get us some sort of a conveyance to the nearest village. And we are staying here until you do. Yes, uh, surely there must be a hostelry somewhere. He means a boozer. All right. I'll try. Ah. It won't be no good, I tell you. I'll come with you. Passengers must cross by the footbridge. You stay where you are. You're a menace, and the next time you drop your hat out of the window, I hope you forget to take it off. You will rue every word you've said. Unfrocked. La da di di, la da di di, la da di 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 di. Huh. I wonder if it stopped raining. I'll have a look. Oh! What is it? My basket. Half wit. Edna, you know what this means, don't you? We'll have to be together all night. Yes, Herbert. Before we are married, like. There is six other people with us, Herbert. She wouldn't believe it. Not if we said there were six to, would she? No, Herbert. Edna, who's going to face her in the morning? You, Herbert. Why should I? After all, she's your mother. She'll be your mother too tomorrow night, Herbert. That's right. Hello. This is Saul Hodgkin up at station. I got eight passengers here. Yes, they missed the Truro connection. I, I know, but what am I going to do with them? They want you to send a bus for them. Yes, but... Uh, hello. Well, uh, what's the verdict? Did we get a bus? I said it wouldn't be no good. But I'll tell you what. If you would all walk across the foul village, maybe they'd put you up at the pub. Mm. Splendid, eh? I always say there are worse places than pubs, eh? <laughs> Why didn't you tell us that before? <laughs> it's all right, people. I fixed everything. There's no bus, but if we walk down to foul village, they'll wine us and dine us and put us to bed. Oh, good. Well, lovely. It's worth a dash through the rain for a night's rest. Just a minute. How far is this village? Oh, it's about, um... I don't know. How far is it? Oh, if you go across the fields, 
It's only four short miles. Four short what? Four miles in this. Oh, wouldn't dream of it. Polly in the middle of a mount? Surely there's some place nearer than Pal Village. That'd be the only place within ten mile of here. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Come on, give me a hand with this. I forgot all about my tisk in the task. I do hope my trousseau's not ruined. Now, don't do that. You'll have puddles all over the floor. Well, I'm soaking wet. I've got to change. It's another thing you can't do. You can't change your. Well, that's a funny thing. The guard said we must all change your. Oh, uh, go and change at the ticket office. All right. Come on, you basket. Don't leave me alone. No peeping. Well, we've got to stay here all night, so we might as well make ourselves comfortable. Thank you. Don't you like that fire? Now listen, my good man, you've said your piece, so jump on your bicycle and pedal off. I got my orders and I got to obey them. You You're can't stay here. here. And uh, who's going to stop us? I be. What are you going to do? Throw us out? Well, I suppose I'll have to. In that case, you can start on me. And me. Now, don't you lay your hands on me. Hey, gentlemen, gentlemen. I do wish you'd ash. Polly wants to go to bed. We are staying here whether you like it or not. Understand? I can't leave the station with you people, you Then you'll have to stay here with us. Oh, no, that I won't. Why, what's the matter with it, apart from everything? Anyone would think from the way you're going on, the place was haunted. It is haunted. Oh, my God. Oh. Herbert. My next, Napoleon. Haunted? What are you trying to do? Scare us out of here? It's beyond it, all right. You won't find any in these parts that would stay here. Especially tonight. Well, as we've decided to stay the night, you'd better let us know what to expect. There's no story for ladies, yes. Well, after that, we've got to hear it. Yeah, come on, spill it. We want something to entertain us. Entertain you? Powers above. Oh, come on, do tell us. Very well. I warned you, there ain't no pretty story. Maybe when you've heard it, you'll change your mind about staying. <coughs> Will you keep that confounded bird quiet? It was the time of the Diamond Jubilee, 43 years ago this very night. In them days, the station master here was a man by the name of Ted Holmes. You was asking about the old line that runs on the other side. You mean the one that don't go nowhere? Aye, but in them days, the trains used to run on it, through yonder short tunnel down to the old port. The other side of the tunnel, the line bridges the river. If you swing bridge, worked by a lever wheel out there on the platform. This was the bridge. In 97, it was always left open for the clay boats to go out on the tide. And they closed it when the trains went across. But no train ever runs over that bridge now. And it had not been closed for 43 years. And the day I be telling you about, a party of some plants folk went to a bean feast up at Truro. And they chartered a special to take them home late that night. Ben Isaacs was the driver of that special. But Ted Holmes was kept on late duty here to close the bridge. He was a sick man, but no one knew it at the time. When they phoned through here from Truro, one in Ted to close it as the special were starting off. Ted answers as he'll go and shut the bridge that moment. But them were the last words he was ever heard to speak. Well, what happened? It was striking 11 o'clock when he lit his lamp and went out on the platform. He reached the bridge wheel and as he tried to turn it, Illness come on him. Poor chap, something must have told him it was all up with him. But he gathered up his strength and struggled back towards the waiting room. His one thought was to get to that phone and stop the train from coming. But he never reached it. He falls down there, dead, with his lamp still burning in his hand. The special was dead on time. The signals were with it. And it would have come in along fast with the bridge wide open and Ted Holmes lying there dead. 
It seemed as though when he was just above the station, something warned Ben Isaacs a danger. But he claps on his brakes, and the train went a tearing through the station yard with all the brakes on and the whistle screaming. It was no use. The train goes a thundering through the tunnel, straight through the open bridge and into the river. Crash! It weren't no pretty story you was making me tell. Yes, but where does the haunting come in? Some nights the signal bell rings, and a train comes screaming and a tearing through the station with its whistle blowing. Probably a goods train. I tell you, there weren't no trains run on these metals from ten at night till seven in the morning. Besides, whatever it is, it never starts from Truro, and it never runs into St. Bland's. If it be a natural thing, where do it come from? Where do it go? Have you ever seen it? I shouldn't be here if I had. They do say, as to look on the ghost train, to mean death. You can stop here if you like, but not me. I got a wife and children looking to me. Do you mean you're afraid? Afraid? I am afraid. I bear the shame to own it. Well, we're not. Very well. Seeing you've made up your mind to it. But if he do hear a train, for God's sake, don't he go running out to look at it? Good night to you all. Good night, old boy. Thanks for the bedtime story. Cheerful, bloke. Oh, I'm glad he's gone. My hands have all come out in a perspiration. Ghost train. <laughs> Never heard such nonsense in all my life. <coughs> that railway accident did take place, you know. Yes, possibly. But all that nonsense about the sight of the train having killed people. Surely, as a medical man, you don't believe that. Well, of course he doesn't. Young lady, I expect you think I'm just an old-fashioned GP. Nowadays, if these specialists don't understand something, they chatter about inhibitions and split personalities. I prefer the immortal William. There are more things in heaven and earth. <laughs> he knew a thing or two, eh? You don't think there's anything in what he said, do you, Herbert? Of course not. All chains, come along, please. Any more for Dewsbury, Wednesbury, Thursbury, or Friday? Yeah. Who will have a ticket for the ghost train? Guaranteed haunted in every bogey. <laughs> Woo! Will you shut up? Shut up. Very good, sir. Pipe, please. This be a natural thing. Where do we come from? Where do we go? To think we've got to put up with that little squirt for the next eight hours. An alarming thought, eh? Do you play chess by any chance, Doctor? Chess? Uh, yes, yes, I have played. I'm afraid I'm a bit rusty now, though. Well, it's hardly my game, of course, but it helps to pass the time away. Yes. I have a set here. Splendid. moment, Gandit's at the rescue, he's a scream. Now, never mind about the ghost train, what you want is a bit of music to cheer you up. And here's a little song I'm going to sing at New Key this summer, it'll paralyze them. Once at the seaside, feeling very reckless, I banged down Tuppence and I rolled on the pier. Hadn't gone far when the strains of music wafted on the breeze and landed in my ear. I quickened up my steps, for I love nice noises. Very soon arrived right opposite the band. Saw the conductor on a lemonade box with his little bat and stuck up in his right hand. One, two, three, four, off went the corn at five, six, seven, eight, the fiddles followed suit. Man in the corner, playing on the piccolo, keeping time with the sole of his boot. Right behind him was a fellow with a trombone, blowing like the devil with his cheeks out wide. Working so hard that both his little eyeballs left. 
have their sockets and stood outside, eyeing on the rostrum, a drummer very lonely, drums all round like bees in a swarm, looking very cold with his nose quite scarlet, banging on the cymbals to keep himself warm. Opposite to him was a man with a toothpaste spitting down a reed. What a nasty man! Sitting next to him was a fellow with a French horn, full of soul and bitter beer, thumbs on the can. Fellow with the cello, um, 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 trying very hard to saw it in two. He's found with the double bass, cuddling it fondly, looking like a camel with a dose of the flu. Man with the piccolo, fed up with the damn thing, sick and tired of hearing the same old toot. Thought he'd like a change, so he put it down beside him and then started messing with a full-size flute. Man with a bassoon, nothing on his music, sounded like a flute. <gasps> Never said a word, just as I thought he was going to fall asleep. He picked up his bassoon and gave us all the birds. Why, you little... Richard, I'll not... Richard, Richard! After all, you started it. Yes, yes, we don't want any more unpleasantness, do we? Huh? Well, I've had just about enough of him. I was only trying to cheer things up. Well, don't. <laughs> so you don't want me to entertain you, eh? No. No good? Napoleon? something. In there. In where? The refreshment room? I'll go and see. I'll attend to this. Yes, certainly. You go first. you, little man. There's no need to go scaring the wits out. Tea? What an idea, a cup of tea. That's what I meant. I suppose you haven't got a teapot and a kettle and a few cups and saucers. No, I else. haven't. And you give me back my tea, see? Ah, uh, stingy. It's two weeks' coupons there. Now, now, don't be mean. After all, there's a war on. We're adapting the pool system. Wait a minute. I'll tell you what I'll do. You give us your tea, and I'll give you a bacon, a sugar, and a couple of cooking fats out of my ration book. Eh? Yeah, go on. Yes, go on. <laughs> I don't mind you having just one teaspoonful. Ah, lady, enough of you. Yeah, none for each and one for the pot. Oh, it's a shame to rob you. Oh, I don't mind, dear. I could do with a cup of tea myself. I've got a tin of milk, too. Oh, yeah. No, no, stop it, stop it, Polly. You do that again, I'll have you boiled up with a few carrots. Uh, what are we going to make the tea in? Well, there's sure to be a tea urn in the refreshment room. The girl's not as dumb as she looks. Come on. Where are you going? I'm going to make some tea. Well, uh, it's all right, boy. It's all right. Don't worry. We can manage. Here you are. Shall we make tea in the dark, or will you have gas? Yes, I think. Certainly. <clears throat> now then, Bobby. Lovely weather we're having for this time of the day. What could I do for you? Uh, first of all, I want eight cups. Eight cups. <clears throat> uh, Bobby, did you say eight cups? Eight cups. Yes. Will you have them with or without? Uh, with or without what? The handles. Mm, with peas. I was afraid of that. I'm afraid we're rather short of handles. It's been too rough for the boats to go out. However, there you are. Four cups and four suck-ups. Hello. I've been looking all over the hotel for you. What do you want? I've come to help you make the tea. Well, we don't want any help. Good. What do I do? The doctor thinks you tap here. You come help me find some water. Goody, goody. Wait a minute, you can't go out in this rain. Of course not. No. You go. Oh. Do you mind? No, my other sugar will be dry by the time I get back. Big hearted gander, that's me. Hot water in number 14. Whoa. Of 
course, if you insist on going. He doesn't. Oh. Oh, the very thing. It's a far, far wetter thing I go to. the bridge, you know, the one that old man nearly died of. Oh, can't you forget about that old man? All right, old man. And it's true, there is a wheel. Yes, it's just outside there. It's like a gruesome thought, isn't it? But what must it be when the train comes a screaming and a tearing through the station, with its whiskers blowing and its haunted steamer? I said forget it. What was I talking about? Here, can I help you? I know. Light the blue paper and retire immediately. <laughs> Hold on, everybody. Don't be alarmed. That was the tea urn. I just tea earned the gas on. Ah, oh, I'd better take that one out of the joke book. I'm afraid my stuff's too high class for them. Hello, I see you got it to light. Yes, we know how it works and we found the cups and we're doing very well. Thank you very much. All right, I was only trying to be useful. Wasn't I, Miss, uh, her? What did you say your name was? The lady didn't say what her name was. Well, I told her what my name well, was. Well, that's no reason to come in here. If it'll and... stop you two arguing, it's Winthrop. Jackie Winthrop. Winthrop? Oh, the same as R.G. in there. Well, he's not your brother. And he's not your father. He can't be your sister, even if he does play hockey for Hampshire. Look here, is this a cross-examination? Oh, I don't mind. Well, I do. This silly little man's done nothing but force his attentions on you ever since he lost his silly hat. Well, I can't call her Miss What's-Her-Name. Besides, I was only trying to help. Well, go and help the people in the other oh, room. I don't want go to. On. Oh, no. He's your cousin. And you're not, um... No. That's all I wanted to know. I say, don't be so miserable. Oh, come on, cheer up. Don't do that. Giving me the palpitations. I say, talking about ghosts... Well, not. Well, I am. Talking about ghosts reminds me of a story about Golders Green. Do you know Golders Green? The underground? No, the crematorium. Oh? One day, as they were pushing the bodies in... Shut up. Wait a minute. As they were pushing the bodies in... Will you shut up? Don't you see you're frightening the ladies? Don't be silly. You're enjoying it, aren't you? No, I'm not. Oh. Perhaps you'd rather I told you the story about the man who had his tongue torn out. No, I wouldn't. Oh, aren't you a difficult lot? Tea for eight coming up. Eight cups of tea. What about Ted? Doesn't he get one? Ted? Who's Ted? Ted Old. I bet he's a bit thirsty by now. After all, he's been lying here these past 43 years. That's not funny. I know it's not funny. How would you like to be lying there with a lamp still burning in your arms? Will you? Oh, come and help me lay the table. Yes, all right. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Can we have this? Ta, give it you back afterwards. Now, don't fuss. There you are. Move these. Ah, there you go. That's splendid. There we are. First service now ready. Take your seats for the first service. Charlie, hot coffee and buttered rolls twice. 
Oh, and a semolina for the spook. Won't be long now, sir. Oh, I shouldn't put him here. Why? He's too near Ted's lamp. He'd singe his parson's nose. Wait a minute. You're asking for a judgment, young man, joking like that about them that's gone. Oh, old Ted wouldn't mind. If he was alive now, he'd die a laughing, wouldn't you, Ted? <laughs> Good old Ted. Herbert, ask them if you'd like one of our sandwiches. No. Why not? We want them. Would you like one of our sandwiches? We might as well share what we've got. Oh, it's awfully sweet of you. Well, that's all right. We've got plenty, haven't we, Herbert? That's right. I've got two hard-boiled eggs. They don't agree with me. Oh, quite a party. Tea, eggs, sandwiches. Yeah, in this pan. Let's see what else we can collect. Oh, I've got the salt. Two pieces of sugar. Oh, tar. Oh, no, they're for polish. You always has my rashes. Ah. Oh? I always give mine to Ted. All right, so what about a slice of lemon for half time? No, I warn you, Gander. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I have a little brandy here I always carry with me. They're for medicinal purposes, of course. Oh, yes, yes. I can see uh, the uh, I, uh, cough. Uh, cold, uh, yes. yes. If anyone else would like a sip with their tea, yeah? Brandy and tea? Disgusting. I don't know how a doctor can bring himself to mention it. Oh. I must say I'm not surprised, coming from him. Do you mean to say you've never tasted brandy in your tea? I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Then you shouldn't knock it back so quickly. You should chew it a bit. Thank you, Doctor. Here's my contribution. Two sausage rolls, very rare specimen. Who's the wreath from? Uh, put it down. Oh. Don't touch the exhibits. Yeah, go and force your rhubarb. Would you like a glass of wine? Will you have one? Oh, thanks. Sausage roll. I don't recommend them. Oh, he stuck his foot out that time. Oh, come and sit down. Richard, some tea? Oh, thanks. Sausage roll, Doctor. Oh, uh, uh, no thanks. <laughs> what, no cake? We had a bit of cake, but we ate it at Plymouth, didn't we, Herbert? <laughs> It's right. It's not right. How can you have your cake and eat it at Plymouth? <laughs> oh, well, uh, I haven't provided anything yet. Now, let me see. Oh, there's a chocolate machine outside. Give me your pennies and I'll provide the sweet. Eh? Hey? the first sensible thing you've said. Come on, let's have your lovely pennies. Ta. My benefit next Tuesday. There we are. What about you, Auntie? Two halfpennies. Two halfpennies. Oh, well, here are. Give me those. I'll give you a penny. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Here. Uh, They are, Ted. Now he's in nobody's way. That was the other foot. I don't think I feel much like eating. Well, you ought to try, Miss Arking, Miss Ed Arking. But it'll be Edna Perkins tomorrow, won't it, dear? I hope so. There you are. Chocolate. Chocolates, you silly little man. These are matches. But I put... I... Matches. That's right. Oh, never mind. We'll do without. Well, we just have to smoke lots of cigarettes and use them up. Cigarette, Doctor. Oh, cigarettes. Talking of cigarettes reminds me of something that once happened to me. Do you know, I was sitting in a railway carriage opposite a man with a bowler hat and he was smoking a cigarette. Well, the cigarette got shorter and shorter and suddenly I realised it was burning right through his lip. Sizzle. 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 I found out afterwards he'd been dead since Clapham Junction. Now, look here, just because some fool of a station master tells a story Listen. that... There's someone coming down the platform. Wait! You're over there now.
It's the station master. Look serious. And take him into the other room. And I'll get some water. I'll go. I know what it is. Ticket office. Better get him on the table here. It is. I ran all the way. I'm afraid you're too late. Poor fellow. We'll have to phone the police. I'll do that. Well, we'd better get back to the ladies. <coughs> How is he? He's he's dead. Dead? I fear so. As far as I can tell, he died of shock. I say you don't think there is anything in that story. No, that... we don't. Well, if you don't, I do. Oh, but you've got to take me out of here. But you can't go in this weather. I'm not stopping here with no corpses. Yes, but where are we going to? I don't know. Back to Mother somehow. I think I'd rather stay here with the deceased. I'm not stopping here with no corpses, not for nobody. Come on, Herbert. Richard, you're not going to let them go like that. If they want to go, it's their funeral. Who said funerals? Now, don't you worry. Everything's going to be all right. Oh, dear. To think that such a thing should happen to me. But nothing has happened to you. Yet. Try this. Oh, dear. I shall never be the same woman again. I can't get through to the police. The line must be down. Oh, oh it is. Please. What do we want the police for? Oh, only to see if they can get us a car. Where's the happy couple? They've gone. Gone? Where to? They've gone to break the news to Mother. I want to go too. I don't like it here. I, I want to go home. Doctor, isn't there anything we can do for her? Uh, well, I... Uh, ah, uh, here we are. Dr. Hennessy's oh. blood mixture. Now, this'll put you on your feet. Or knock you off them. Cheerio. <sighs> do you feel better now? You certainly look better. Here. Try a drop more. Smells like Christmas pudding. Oh, I believe it's brandy. No. Is it really? Let me see. Do you know I believe you're right? This is just what you want. Not likely. I was born and raised strict temperance. That's how I mean to stay. But this is medicine. Well, if you're sure. But only a tiny drop now. Just to ease the palpitation. Ugh. Cough it up. Oh, oh! now I've broken the pledge. It's warming me all the way down. Yes, you wait till it gets to the junction. It's not really nasty, is it? No. I mean, as medicines go. That seems to be going pretty well. I think I'd better take that. Eh? Uh, just a minute. I there go. She's got a bad uh, <coughs> the same as you had. Uh. <coughs> now sip that slowly and you'll be as white as rain. That's right. It's got a funny taste, did not it? Listen, I've just thought of something funny. Well, that's a change. You remember when he fell through the door? Yeah. It was just 11 o'clock. What about it? Don't you remember the station master said that that was the time that Ted Holmes... Oh, will you shut up about all that? I was only trying... Hey! Here, 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 here. Ooh. Oh, look. All gone. Mm. Now, what have you been a doing of? Do you 
No. In spite of all these terrible happenings, I'm beginning to feel quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> you naughty girl. Oh. You're tight and you like it. Oh, dear. What can the matter be? Oh, dear. What can the matter be? Oh, I think you'd better go and lie down. Go and lie down yourself. <laughs> I mean, you'd be much more comfortable. I'm lovely and comfortable, thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa Emma. Whoops, a daisy. Whoops, a blooming buttercup. Uh, the buffet. Little Miss Muffet, off to the buffet. You know, everything's going well. I feel just as I did when I come off the big wheel platform. Oh, not surprised. Oh, dear. Oh, what can I Where are we going to? Now, 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 we're going to put you to bed. Young man, I think you forget yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, young woman, I think you flatter yourself. Oh, Here we go. Yeah. Well, I again. Oh, oh, I don't want to go in here. Yeah, go on, in you go. I don't want to go, go in, in here. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> Here we are. This will make a lovely bed. Come on. Thank you. But I've got a beautiful bed, my own. No. Oh, yes, I have. I got brass bedsteads in every room. What do you think of that, Titch? You hear that? <laughs> brass bedsteads. Brass bedsteads with knobs on. Knobs. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, take it easy, Mrs. Whoa, -ho. Mrs. Miss, Miss Bourne. I'm spinstress. Spinstress with knobs on. I'm maiden lady. Here we are. Yeah, it's going to be nice and comfortable. <laughs> and let me tell you, my bonny blue-eyed boy, <laughs> I was not neglected in my youth. <laughs> <laughs> Will one of you go to her rug for me? I'll get it. No, I'll go. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll go. Come on, us. No know. use. It's no use. It's no knobs. Not? Never mind. Come on. No knobs. Wait a minute. Have you seen this? What? They all stay on. Hmm? Well, when the chap did it at the Hippodrome, they all stayed on. Ah, oh, good. There you are. Now you'll be as snug as a rug in a boat. Hmm. Look. Knobs. Yeah. <laughs> Knobs. Lovely knobs. There you are. No. Now go to sleep. Shh, shh, shh. Go to Bobo. Knobs. This place is getting more like a madhouse every minute. Richard. What? I thought I heard a scream. You're imagining things. What's the matter? Oh. That's all right. There's nothing to worry about. You're quite safe. I think it's coming this way. From him. Hide you? What do you mean? But he's coming. He'll want to take me back, but I'm not going. I'm not. I've got to see it tonight. I know it'll come. I always know. I'm afraid I don't follow you. But you know, you must know. There's a car coming down the road. It's him. Don't let him find me. You can't go in there. Then where can I go? We'll look after you, won't we? But he's coming, I tell you. Listen. It's crashed. I'll go out there. You better stay here, Winthrop. I'm coming. Better come too, Doctor. Yeah, that's my coat. Oh, you look after the shop. Are you hurt? No, I don't think so. You've given me a car a bit of a headache. Oh, look here. I've heard of it raining cats and poodles, but never stopping from these here. Some damn fool left his luggage in the middle of the road. Must be Edward and Herbert. We can't hang about in this. Better come with us. There's a fire in the wick room. Uh, Bring the fender with you. Oh, he won't half laugh when he sees this. Just 
stay in there and keep quiet. Well, who the devil are you people? Well, who the devil are you? Yes, my name's Price. Oh, I'm Tommy Gander. He's a scream. Comedian and entertainer. Mm, so far, you've been neither. Neither? Neither. Neither. Oh, we've been through all that. Oh, Herbert, my new nighty. I shan't have anything to wear tomorrow night. That's right. What are you all doing here at this time of night? We might ask you the same question. I came out to look for my sister. Your sister? Yes, I had certain reasons for believing that she'd come to this place. Oh? And why do you think she'd come here? I can't be expected to go into that with strangers. In that case, I'm afraid we can't help you. I see. Then I'm afraid I shall look for myself. So she is in there. Before we get belligerent, don't you think some explanation would help? All right. If you must know, my sister's... Well, not quite normal. She suffers from delusions. Normally, she's kept under observation. But tonight, she got away. It's a lie. Don't listen to him. He's trying to take me back. So there you are, Julia. It's no good. I can't come back. You know I can't. Now, be sensible, oh, Julia. Oh, what's the good of talking? I must stay here. I can't help myself. Julia. Don't touch me. Go away. Just a minute. How do we know that you're telling the truth? Here, here. Perhaps you'll be good enough to mind your own business. It is my business if you insist on taking her away against her will. I associate myself with that unanimously. Now, look here, Mr. McIntosh. What's it got to do with you? That's right. Well, what's it got to do with me? Here. Don't let him take me back, please. Why can't she stay here? At least until she's feeling better. Now listen to me, please. You people have heard the story of this place, I suppose. Oh, about the train that starts screaming around Ted Holmes' land. Rush! He means the ghost train. So called. Well, that infernal nonsense is responsible for my sister's mental condition. She was near this station one night several years ago. She thought she saw the train. But I did see it. You know I saw it. I did see it. Yes, yes. It was a great shock to her. So great a shock that it, well, affected her permanently. Some nights she gets the idea that the ghost train will run. It has a morbid fascination for her. She feels she must see it again. Tonight is one of those occasions. <clears throat> now, I hope you understand. But it will come tonight. I know it will. Yes, yes. By the way, who told you this story? The station master. With all the trimming. Mind you, he wound us to no pretty story. Oh, old Saul Hodgkin, where is he? He's in the ticket office. He's dead. That's right. Saul Hodgkin dead? Good heavens. His troubles are over. I've locked the door. Is this a joke? Because if so, it doesn't amuse me. Of course not. We put him on there ourselves. Well, where is he now? I don't know. We were all in the other room, so he can't have gone out. Apart from being dead. He's gone. He can't have. When's all this supposed to have happened? Well, it happened all right. We all saw it. Just right. Yes, you ask this gentleman. He's a doctor. He should know a dead body when he sees one. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I rather think I should. Eh? Uh, the man was certainly dead. A heart failure. In my opinion, the result of a shock. What happened exactly? Well, he left here to go home. And about 20 minutes later, we heard footsteps. And when I opened the door, he fell forward into the room. Which door? That one. I knew it. Don't you see? It wasn't Saul Hodgkin at all. It was Ted Holmes, coming back from the dead. What did he look like? You mean his face? Yes, yes. Well, uh, have you ever seen a bad nut? He clocked him. He was a tall, gaunt sort of fellow. Are you sure of that? Of course. It wasn't the station master. It was Ted Holmes. Come now, Julia, you're upsetting everybody. It must have been Hodgkin. Then where is he? A man couldn't vanish into thin air. 
and the time when all this happened. It was 11 o'clock, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Sharp. That proves it. We've got to get her away from here. No, I'm staying. I'm staying here till it comes. You know it will come. You say I imagine it, but you only want to put me away like you did before. No, I'm not leaving. I'm going to see it. I must see it, even if it kills me. That's enough, Julia. Don't touch me! Julia! Uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, if she were a patient of mine, I'd let her stay, you know. You don't understand. Uh, quite likely. Uh, they do say I'm old-fashioned. But if she stays and the train doesn't come, and it won't, she will realize then that it is only a delusion. Surely that's only common sense, eh? All right. I don't think I'm going to be any party to this tomfoolery. As soon as I can find another car, you're coming back with me. Uh, Mr. McIntosh, if we shouldn't be here when you get back, will you see the paper spell my name right? G-A-N-T. He's gone. Yes. You'll be all right now. Eh? As soon as the rain stops, we can all go. No, I'm staying here. Of course. Just as you like. Like? It isn't as I like, because I can't help myself. This place terrifies me, but it fascinates me too. It's full of eyes. They stare and stare. Don't look at me like that. You think I'm mad, but I'm not mad. Oh, no, I, 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 uh, and I go. You see, I know what's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. The screamer breaks, the shriek of the whistle, louder, louder. Why don't you all go now and leave me before it's too late? When the train comes... The train won't come. It came that night. I saw it thundering down the valley, on and on, into the river. And then I saw Ben Isaacs, the driver, coming back out of the tunnel. But weren't they all killed? All except Ben Isaacs. He was thrown clear. He came back to the station singing. Singing Rock of Ages. His mind's gone. They say that before the ghost train runs, you hear the bell ringing dismally. It'll be here soon. I know it. Look! Don't you see? There! What the Look, it's Ted Holmes again, coming out of the office. And you see? Uh, yes, yes, of course, but uh, don't you think it would be better if we all... He's crossing towards the door. Look! opening the door. It's all right. It's only the wind. <laughs> I've got an aunt who suffers with that. Her doors are always blowing open. My auntie Flurry. I think this room's worrying you. Let's go into the refreshment room and if you open the door now, you'll find he's still there. You'll soon see. No, wait! Now listen to me, my dear. There's nothing to worry about. Come over by the fire. Come along. There. Now listen, I've got a nasty feeling we haven't got over the worst of this yet. I want you to promise that if anything unpleasant happens, you'll be guided by me. All right. Look! The light's going out. Why don't you go? There's still time. We can't go. Then stop your ears. For God's sake, don't look. Remember what happened to me. You must be warned, you must. Listen. The signal bell. Now will you believe me? Nonsense, that doesn't prove anything. But the bell, it always rings. Now look here, this is absurd. What was that? What? I thought I heard a train whistle. It's coming. It's coming. She 
she's right. It is a train. Thundering down the valley. Coming. It's coming. On, on. I'm going to look. No. It won't open. Some water, please. Yes, of course. Wait a minute. There's no more water in there. I'll get some from outside. You show me where it is. Oh, I've just remembered the ghost train had all its lights on. Well, what about it? Well, they'll get pinched. It's after blackout time. Don't be silly. All that was 43 years ago. There was no war on then. Yes, there was. There was the Boa Boa. I can't stand any more of this. I've come to the end of the tether. Where's the other stocking? Now, I want you to go right back in there, and whatever happens, don't let anyone leave. Where are you going? To get some water. We don't need any water. Well, what about Fanny Fadeaway? Yes, the doctor said. Please, there's no time to explain that now. You said you'd trust me. Yes, I do. But where will you be? We're going outside to do a bit of snooping. Snooping? That's an idea. You be Charlie Chan, I be Honorable Son. Well, what if they ask me where you are? Tell them on where the servants take the splickable glass to get unspeakable water. Go on, go back inside there. That's a good girl. Glow, glow, glow. She's glum. Now, where's this bridge wheel? What bridge wheel? Oh, I don't know whether I'd bother about that. Remember what happened to Edward? Edward? Edward, oh. Oh, go on, show me where it is. This way. That's it over there. It looks like a washing up machine. Ah, oh, so this is the historic spot. I say, doesn't go smoke smell funny? I bet you can't say that quickly. Doesn't go smoke smell... <whistles> Try that with my other teeth in. Hello, it isn't there. What is it? The old man's lamp. I put it there when I came to get the water. I say, didn't old Saul Hodgkin say this bridge was always open? It ain't been closed these 43 years, it ain't. It ain't, eh? Well, look at that. Closed. That's funny, it was open just now. Ben Isaacs. He's coming back. Oh, I warned you, I warned you. It's been fooling around with a gun outside. What? Didn't you hear? Yes, just now. But you can't leave here until... Until the police arrive. So you're the idiot with the gun. I might have known it. What the blazes have you been shooting at? A ghost? And no ordinary ghost either. This one had a signature tune. Oh, I'm sick of all this nonsense. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. 
I'm afraid nobody goes. Excuse me. Now look here. Get back. Go on. Sit down. Have you gone mad? On the contrary. I suppose everyone knows what this is. Believe it or not, the blood of Ben Isaacs. I've winged a ghost. Oh, rot. If you don't open these doors... Mr. Winthrop, there wouldn't be any reason why you'd want us all away from here, would there? And what the devil do you mean by that? Yes, I'd like to know that too. Perhaps I should explain that the person responsible for the ghost train is with us in this room now. The ghost train? Yes, only it isn't a ghost train. This one happens to be as real as the Plymouth Express. But uh, th there was an accident, you know. Perfectly true. There's a strong local superstition about the ghost train. That's what gave somebody in this room the idea. Made their job easier because for years people had stuck their heads under the bedclothes if they heard a train in the night. But when we turned up, we made it rather awkward for them. So when the station master couldn't get rid of us, they set to work scaring us out. But they didn't, did they? Uh, no. Bless my soul. Don't look at me like that. I don't know anything about it. I assure you I'm going to Redruth as Dr. Harrowby's locum. Huh? Eh? Just a moment. I don't pretend to understand all this, but you and your silly little friend have been behaving rather queerly yourselves. Exactly what game are you playing at? Richard, I just remembered. If it hadn't been for Mr. Gander, he wouldn't be here at all. Jackie. Oh, I say. Oh. Richard, did you have to do that? Of course, the man's a lunatic. Might have shot somebody at any moment. Oh, here's the key. Now we can get out of here. But you can't leave him here like this. Don't worry, we're going to take him with us. Yes, a little fresh air will soon bring him round. Will you two bring him to the bus? Uh, yes, certainly. Right. Come on, Herbert, you help. What, me? You're back, Doctor. Oh, yes, I'll come back for them. Uh, be careful. Steady. Steady. Well, thank heaven we can get out of here. I'm sick of this hole. Yeah, I don't want to complain, but... I do hope this will be all for tonight. He'll be all right in here. All right, driver. Hey, hey! Hey! Wait a minute! <laughs> I nearly missed the bus. Uh, it's right. Where the blazes have you been? Trying to get out the tunnel. I couldn't find the hole. All right now, sir. Yes, but step on it, will you? Wait a minute. My basket's still in the station. We'll attend to that in the morning. Yes, but say it disappears, I won't be able to open on Monday. That will be a break for new keys. Well, we're off. Yes. What a bit of luck finding a bus, eh? Oh, look at Teddy. Shh. Come to sleep. Yes, I put him to sleep. Yeah. Hey? You mean you were uh, <laughs> on, on the floor? Yes. And if we have any trouble from you, you are just as likely to join him. Uh, don't let's have any more unpleasantness. No. Anybody got any smelling salts? You haven't got a drop of the... <laughs> the... No, no. Come on, come to Daddy. Oh, I wish I'd paid attention at the first aid class. Yeah, don't worry, he'll be all right. Just a moment, I want to ask you a question. Where exactly did you go when you left the waiting room? Oh, me? Mm. Outside. Don't you remember when the spook special came along? Yes, I remember perfectly. But it's very curious that when you and your friend went out, things began to happen. Oh, you mean old Rock of Ages? It was Ben Isaacs. He was coming back. I knew he would. Now, Julia. Something mackerel, what hit me? I'm afraid I did. I'm very sorry, but it was entirely necessary. But you... Where are we? Why, you... Now, 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 now. Count up to ten. One, two, you three. You blithering idiot, where did you get to? Oh, I walked into the tunnel wall. <laughs> I backed myself out in the knockout. I mean, I knocked myself out in the blackout. Well, I think we can say we successfully stopped your little game, whatever it was. You've successfully mucked up the whole show. Now there's no one to get that train when it comes back. Comes back? The ghost train never comes back. This one's more obliging. It makes the return journey. 
But if the train does come back, it'll have to cross the bridge, won't it? Of course. But if it's a ghost train, it wouldn't matter whether the bridge was open or closed, would it? No, but... Oh, well, that's all right, then. What are you babbling about? Well, we'll soon see. <laughs> I opened the bridge. You've done what? Well, somebody had closed it, so I opened it. Otherwise, the story wouldn't be right. You meddling fool! Nichols, stop! I say, what is this? Sit down. I'll do nothing of the sort. I rather think you will. Oh, what are you doing? You can't keep still. Unless you're looking for trouble. He's opened the bridge back to the station, flat out. It's too late, sir. We passed Walker's crossroads on our back. If we get across the footbridge, we can stop them on the other side. Yes, cut down the lane as fast as you can. Strange, never late. <laughs> We take off. I hope you're enjoying all this. If you hadn't been so anxious to show off your right hook, we wouldn't be in this mess. But what's happening? I don't understand. Have you ever heard of the fifth column? What? The gent of the gun is a Nazi sympathizer. The more they pay him, the more he sympathizes. Cut that out. But smuggling arms is a dangerous game in wartime, so they invented the ghost train. The train? I can see it. It's on the last curve before the bridge. We'll never stop it. We've got to stop it. Turn to pull up here, I'm cutting down the hill. Stop! Watch them. Oh. Come on, make calls. I knew that Sterling was no more a doctor than I was. How? I saw him taking a pulse with his thumb. You did. You didn't know anything about it till I told you. Well, after all, I did open the bridge while you were lying there like a British heavyweight. Oh, there you are, sir. I think we can get you this address for the inquest. Correct, Commissar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, that'll be your special, sir. It's due any minute. Thank you very much. Do you know, I've an idea you're by no means what you make out to be. Confidentially, I'm not. You must be relieved. Ah, there you are. I'm afraid, old boy, I've uh, been a bit of a... A bit of a? I think you've been a, a lot of a. Well, anyway, if you'll accept my apologies. Of course. And you, Gander. And you, Winthrop. <coughs> Nobs. We've forgotten about the old bird with her old bird. Oh. Oh. Feel better? I've got a terrible headache. Don't tell me. You've got a piece of flannel where your tongue should be. How did you know? <laughs> Never mind. The train's in now. You'll soon be safe in Truro. Good. I'm so glad nothing exciting has happened. Nothing exciting. <laughs> I don't know. 